Hello and welcome along to Mondo Channel at Movies. My name is John and my name is John. Well, there you go. So this is actually the second video that was shot today. So anyway, on this video, John has come through with a bag of Blu-rays. So take it away, John. Your bag of Blu-rays is more like a bag of nerves, I think, right now. <laughs> what I will say, I'll be, I'll be honest, I'll confess right now, I personally think I could have done better with the first Asian DVDs video and the second Asian DVDs video, which you'll see shortly. Um, I think I was felt, felt a bit pressed for time. I felt I could have went, went a bit further. So I am just a bit disappointed in how I came across in those two videos. But that's that's really only on, my, the, on the first one. In the first one and the one and the one which will be on shortly. I put, that's how I personally feel. That's really? only my that's only my opinion. Well, I beg to differ, John, because put it this way, I think that you got more facts out that I even knew existed to do with those movies. Well, that's that's great of you to say, and I appreciate that as much as I appreciate any other positive comments here about me. I mean, you all know that by now, but that's. Personally, that's how I feel, so that's absolutely fine. Mm. So we'll move on. So just to digress for a moment, uh, what I've got, you may remember some time ago uh, when John, I ordered John a copy of the three-disc couch on Yeshua the Pop Blu-ray by Severin in the Black Friday sale, I believe it was way back when. Now, I know there's some subscribers here was uh, well aware there was an issue with the, the, the film disc, the, the Blu-ray disc. There was um, some trouble with the black levels, very inconsistent, um, there was something wrong, and uh, there was a, there has been a replacement program put in place by Severin. Um, I did manage to acquire a replacement disc for myself, my copy after John's, which I brought over. Mm -hmm. And we've had a test, we've tested the disc out, and it does appear to be more stable, more solid black levels on yeah, the correct definitely. disc. What, uh, what we the conclusion we've come to is that first of all, I will give you a look at this now. This is the Incorrect disc. What's John's, uh, John's done is he's, John, he's, he's took out the incorrect disc and he's yeah. replaced it with the correct disc, which is in the case now. This one here is the disc with the faulty black levels. Now, if you look here at the serial number, I don't think you can see that. Sorry, for, sorry about that. Um, it just says like a couple of few uh, numbers in BR at the end of it, I believe. Uh, now, like I say, this is the defective disc. If you look at the disc John's showing you, oops. You notice next to the seven logo, there's a V3 after the serial number yeah. there. That's the that's the corrected disc. That's the disc which has the the revised black levels. So if you buy this release, if the disc says V3 after the serial number, you should be fine. Nothing to worry about. Mm -hmm. However, if the disc is basically just has the serial number and no V3 after that, then I would contact Severin, get a replacement, and then take it from there. Mm -hmm. Good, uh, good facts there, and I, I do think that's because we put it on actually when we looked at it on the TV, and we're looking at the the, the one that wasn't correct, mm -hmm. and we both thought well, that's the first time I've seen it on the OLED TV. We thought it doesn't look that bad, mm -hmm. but when we looked in the dots in the dark scenes, it looked a bit grey, and then we we'll put this one on, with, with, uh, went the same scene, and we looked at the same scene, didn't we, when it started in the car. And you could see that the, it was black, wasn't it, instead of being grey? It was more, like I say, it was yeah. more stable, more more, yeah. more, um, more defined, if that's the right word. I don't know what it is, but it, you, can, you can tell there's, there's, a, there's an upgrade there. There's, you know, the, the, the blocks were revised. Definitely. So, yes, so this is coming out in 4K by 88 movies. Yes. 88 films, apparently. I didn't know that you did. So you beat me to the punch. <laughs> I'll be a first, I tell you. Yeah. Um, but the, the main thing is with this one, and it does say that it's fully uncut. Mm-hmm. Um, but how can it be? You mm. never know, because obviously the violence in here is something that the BBC FC doesn't like, mm. and that's why it's never been released uncut in the UK ever. Mm -hmm. And I'm so surprised because I thought with Seven releasing this, because you know the kind of in partnership at the minute. Yeah, I know. Yeah, I thought with them doing this, they would have thought, well, we'll do, we'll take the helm for this one, mm -hmm. and you obviously will miss out on the air. The 4K on the UK, but obviously mm -hmm. 88 have went and done it. So, well, you know, um, you know what I've said before. I mean, I'm all for. I'm not. I'm not into this rivalry between various labels. I, I would rather have like so RO88, Utica, you know, all all the big names. I would rather have them working together as opposed to apart or against each other. You know, it's yeah. not about competition or rivalry. It's about giving your doing the best they can, giving the the, the fans what they want. You know that. We don't, we don't need all this bad blood between various labels. You know, it's, no, you it's, not, it's not called for. No, um, not. But brilliant. Right, so without further ado, first of all, um, I'll move on to the first Blu-ray, which uh, my friend John's acquired off me. And this is the Outer Prince 
limited edition slipcase and booklet version of Damon Cronenberg's existence. Now, this was the last Cronenberg film I saw. I believe it was 1999, I think. I could be wrong. Once described as a thinking man's matrix, which I can see why, because it's one of those films where you really? sort of blurs the line between fantasy and reality. You don't know what's going on as real or not, you know. Um, I think when I first had this on DVD, I watched it three times because there was three separate commentaries. Oh, um, right. Yeah, I mean, that was back in the days when I would actually do that for a film. I'd done the same thing with Fight Club. I don't think I could do it now. <laughs> um, but no, it's, it's a quite an enjoyable film. Actually, you know, a good cast, solid cast. Uh, Willem Dafoe, Jude Law, Jennifer Jason Lee. You know, mm. and you know what Cronenberg you go and get some, like, um, something like the original, something to get your teeth into. Yeah. You know, I think especially with Cronenberg's earlier films, um, Shivers, Rabbit, The Brew, which I, as far as I'm concerned, he's never done better than them, I'll be honest with you. Yeah. Um, that was Cronenberg back at his body horror best. You know, but this was me, this for me was the, the last, um, last, Cronenberg film I saw, which I actually enjoyed. I will admit, I haven't watched any of his latest films since then, Eastern Promises, A History of Violence, that sort of thing. I've missed them, I haven't seen them yet, so they could well be great, but until I see them, I can't comment on them. But have a look at this, John, tell me what you think. Brilliant. Uh, and I do know that uh, Cronenberg is meant to be making a horror film coming up. Is it The uh, Crimes of the Future? Yes. Yeah, that's that's coming out um, shortly, I think, in the what States. this one, actually? Number, no, is that number two? That's number two, and it was, oh, it was 1999, I was right. Yeah, it's number two. Yeah. I didn't realise that that was one of the, the the first ones that came out. It was, yeah. I yeah, mean, it, it is massively out of print, you're right. Yeah, they did do a few. I think they've done Roller Coaster, which, again, I might yes. be, I might have a spare one oh, if you're interested. I do like Roller Coaster. I used yeah. to watch that on TV. I've got that one with the Timothy Smithies Bottoms. and, the, and uh, George Siegel. Yeah, yeah. Oh, right. Yeah, uh, Timothy Bottoms is the bar guy. George yeah. Siegel's the, the, the good guy. Oh, yes, that's right, yeah. Um, but again, the one I've got, I've got a spare one with a slipcase in the book. So if you're interested, let me know. And mm -hmm. yeah, we'll yeah, work something out. I do like that movie. I mean, they've done a few. We've done Class of 984. Yeah, I've got that one. They've done. Um, Rabbit. Uh, yeah, Rabbit, yeah. And what was the other one? Um, oh. Can't think of the other ones. Um, well, they've, they've done a few more over the years, which I've got. I've got more of Silent them. Night. Silent Night, Deadly Night. I've got that one as well. Yeah. Um, oh, Split Second and The New Kids. That was them. Case, that was them as well. Yeah. Oh, brilliant. Excellent, that. Right. And I, do just like I do think that, though, talking about slip covers and slip boxes, mm -hmm. if, because uh, I was after prom night, which I can't see with a slip slip box, I also had that, but I hadn't, mm -hmm. which is weird. Because I let it go, I, I went past it loads of times, I didn't buy it, and I should have bought it. So this one here, um, if I'd saw it just as a slip cover, I wouldn't buy it because I do like these with this box on because mm -hmm. you can't put them next to each other, can you, on the shelves? They no. just look a bit odd. No, that's brilliant. You've got to try and keep a consistency. I mean, I'm, I'm the same. I like a bit of consistency. I'm a bit of order. You know what I'm like. Uh, Plus, as well, uh, I've never seen any sort of newish David Cronenberg movies. Yeah, I know. I mean, I mean, for me, like I say, when it comes to Cronenberg, I'll always go back to the older stuff. Right. You know, like yeah, right. Shivers, Rabbit, The Brood, and going on from there, I would say Scanners, The Dead Zone, Video Drone, maybe The Fly, and then after that, oh, yeah, I, 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 I'll go no further. Um, Dead Ringers. Yeah, I never saw that. Actually, that was that was that period when I, once after The Fly, I sort of just I didn't. I lost. Really I lost the thread. Yeah. When I watched it, I didn't like it. Um, yeah, don't know if I'd like it now, but didn't care for it much. Right. So the next one, actually, this one is a DVD. Um, I haven't seen it for a while, but this one is the French action thriller 22 Bullets, starring the great Jean Reno, Leon himself. Okay. Um, like I say, I haven't seen this one for a few years. I remember, be, remember it being quite, quite, uh, quite brutal, you know, quite, uh, quite gory. Um, I not long got the Blu-ray because I thought, well, I might as well get it in, in better quality than a DVD. So I thought, well, I'll just get with the DVD, pass it on. The only issue with this is that uh, the, the correct issue, uh, ratio sorry, should be 235.1. This one, for some reason, Anchor Bay went to a ratio of 177.1, so it's, it does look as good as it could. Yeah. It could look. And you can tell when you watch a film for, from uh, way back when, when I saw the film, you could tell it suffered from not being in the full 235. But no. I don't know why they couldn't get the full ratio. I mean, it's your guess will be as good as mine. The US Blu-ray did have the full ratio, so why we couldn't have got the same full, the full ratio is beyond me. Um, I wouldn't say it's, it's up, there, up there with the likes of Leon, you know, but... Um, 
If you like, is it better than the remake of Rollerball? Oh, well, fuck. I would imagine so. <laughs> I would imagine so. I've not seen a remake, oh, but uh, oh, oh, it is. Yeah. Well, actually, well, I mean, I can recommend some other good French stuff like The, the Nest. That's a good French one. Wasabi. That's a good action yeah. comedy. John Reno's in that as well. Um, Nikita, of course, mm, which yeah. is Luke Besson. And the both District 13 films, which are great as well. You know, and I also noticed on your latest post where you were given a copy of Mezrine. That's uh, right, yes, yeah, kind of instant public enemy number one. Mm -hmm. Fantastic. So is that a TV series or is it movies? I think it's just two movies. Um, yeah, it's definitely two things. They are, yeah. I yeah. think one details like his early like when he comes back from the army and he you know goes out right. crime, and then the other the other film is like when he I think he starts to delve um, detail more from crime into sort of revolutionary. Um, action, but they're both great films. I mean, if, if, if you like gangster films, Casino, Goodfellas, Mean Streets, oh, Mesrine, right. you've got to give it a go, you know. Oh, well, there you go. And uh, I knew it was, it was one of the months with thanks to Martin Geary again for, for sending that to me. And um, well, yeah, if it's I like these sort of action movies that are like um, a bit brutal. Well, in the, its own way. the thing is, I mean, I've noticed like recently you've been getting more like French stuff, like I think one subscriber gave you a lot of Frontiers, yeah, on that's DVD, right, right. and I yeah. great well worth a watch and you know like i say as i've mentioned before a lot of people say that about frontiers yeah it's it's um it's well worth a watch like high tension as i believe other subscribers have mentioned the pack the horde mortars well you've seen mortars yeah um inside and also jean go back to jean reno if you look at um the crimson rivers uh, films you've got the crimson rivers where he teams up with vincent cassell off mezrine right and in the second one chris valise in the second one believe it or not mm -hmm. uh Crimson Rivers, the Angels of the Apocalypse. You've got John Reno and uh, I can't think of his name. Can't think of his name again. Who, who, who he stars alongside? But Chris Valles mm. passes more on about uh, in that. But if you like, if you like French films, go for their ones as well. Um, Good recommendation. Yeah. So let's uh, let's have a look here. So the next Blu-ray. These are all new Blu-rays, by the way. Okay. I've just got spare copies, so I'm, you know, I've just. I've got to cut down on some space. So the next one is space. a new copy, yeah, of the Flying Guillotine. Mm -hmm. Storm of the Great, Chen Kwan Tai. Uh -huh. Now I mentioned you earlier in the other video, I thought I'd give you the DVD for Flying Guillotine 2. This is the original. Yeah. Um, I think Kung Feng's, yeah, Kung Feng's in this one as well. Um, again, basically, you know, just um, a devious like Manchus or Ching's come up with device, this weapon like a, like a flying hat box with teeth that sort of lands. It's on the end of a chain, the thrown at the enemy. Lands lands on your head, covers your head, and it's got like like blades which stick out and just basically rip your head off. I mean, it, it sounds it's that rings a bell, you know. Well, are you not thinking of the Moss of the Flying Killer team with Jimmy Wang Yu? That's a similar sort of thing. I don't know, I just remember that whole yeah. uh, implement. Well, have a look at this one. I mean, it's a great, um, great, great transfer mm -hmm. as well. A, a good looking film, which we'd yeah. expect from the shows. So, just check it out and let us know what you think. Yeah, definitely. That's um. Well, these, we talked about this in the other video. These Asian collection from mm -hmm. the 88s are really nice, aren't they? Mm -hmm. And uh, they're really good quality. And you know you're going to get, you know you're going to get one that looks, they all look great, mm -hmm. don't they? Well, we checked out Master Avengers and the Killer Constable earlier on, and the quality was fine on them. They look great, so yeah, no, com no complaints on the, on the picture quality front. And that's number 10, spine number 10, mm -hmm. these are... These are numbered. I know you like numeric row, yeah. that's right. But very, very discreetly though, it's not as if the huge tens, if they weren't there, you would miss it. Easy to overlook them. Yeah, you, you could. Which you is could. quite good in a way. So the next one um, is a slipcase, new slipcase copy of the One Arm Swordsman. Now I know I'll give you the DVD before, which is a special edition. Right. This is the Blu-ray from '88. I, I think it only has a commentary, um, but it's got a. Let's have a look. It's got a. Um, I think maybe an interview as well. Plus, it's got a reversible sleeve as well. So, as you can see, brand new slipcase. So, nice slipcase, that. Mind you, if the DVD is any indication, the quality on this should be superb. Mm. So, that's a that's a lovely slipcase. I like these ones that look a little bit retro, as if it could be kind of, you know, it could have been fashioned way back when. It yeah. might not be the original poster for the, uh, the movie, but it could be one that was like, it's just a throwback, isn't it? I it is yeah. on that one. a Chinese picture with English subtitles. You know. <laughs> Don't have to say that, do you? Yeah, it's quite. It's it's. Um, I mean, again, I mean, for all I know, the slipcase could be out of print. It probably. I, I would imagine it would be. The truth, truth be told, and that's spine number fifteen. 
And the, let's have a look here. Ah, looks like you've got the next one, number 16. And this is, again, a new slipcase copy of the Dragon Missile. Storm the Great Lolia. Um, and directed by Ho Meng Hua, who I believe directed the Flying Guillotine as well. I think he directed some of the Black Magic movies. Show yeah. Brothers, well, Black Magic 2, I'm not sure. I'm, I haven't seen that one either, to be, to be honest with you. I've seen the first one. Right. I've never seen this one, so I can't really comment on I mean, you know, if I've never got a chance, uh, not got got the time to watch it. Um, but, with it being a show with us, I'm expecting it to be quite an enjoyable effort. Like I say, I've never seen a bar show with this movie, so there's something yeah. like in all of them. So I'm, That's I'm, a good point, mind. You can more, more or less say, if you're sitting on a fence with a movie like this, and it's Show Brothers, go ahead with it. Is this Show Brothers? It is, yeah, Show Brothers, yeah. Go ahead with it, because you're probably going to have a, a good time with it. Well, that's the thing. I mean, you know, if, if um, there's always something I like in the Show Brothers movie. Like I say, that for me, the plots tend to blend into one. You've got rebels fighting against the Chings or the Manchus or corruption or injustice or whatever whatever, whatever it is. Um, that's generally the gist, I think, I, I I think a lot of show about those movies, but sometimes you can just switch off your brain, just enjoy the visuals and the fights, mm -hmm. and that's good enough right. for me. Brilliant. To be honest, these these ones that uh, when I went past in the shops, and I've seen quite a lot of these when they first come out. I've never seen these two uh, available in the shop, even even sort of online. I've never they never come ones where it says, "Oh yes, I've seen that cover before." Especially this one, lovely cover that. Mm -hmm. I don't know why I'm drawn to it, I just am. I can imagine that being the vintage poster because yeah. it, just, it just looks, I mean, that as well, that as well. Yeah. You know, both of them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, brilliant. Uh, the next one is a little bit further behind. This is number 26. This is the Clan of the White Lotus, also known as Fists of the White Lotus, I I've believe. seen that one before, yeah. Um, I saw this one on, on a bootleg VHS, I think back in the 90s, a long time ago. Uh, never seen a widescreen, never seen this particular Blu-ray, I've never had a chance to watch it again. Um, I've checked out some clips on YouTube just to see, try and jog my memory. Um, looks pretty good, plenty of fights from what I remember. Um, but again, I'm expecting this to look superb. Mm -hmm. You know, as, as, as like I said before, I've never seen a bad looking show with the series. No, I've seen ones which look lesser, like, like they could look better, but I've, I've seen so much look spectacular. Hmm. You know, so once again, uh, no extras with this one, but you get the reversible sleeve. Um, yeah, limited edition, first pressing slipcase and booklet notes. Right, so... Well, I think it's a it's a not and bet that when you've got this on the cover, it's got a grey cover like this, and then you get the cover inside, you re do reverse it. Oh. So you've got the chance of looking at all the art hmm. in one go. That's it, that's really... These, I mean, these ones here, are they doing a thing where they're trying to get their ones... Make some really original parts right. to it because that's. I think that some of the other ones don't look super original. Mm -hmm. um, although this one I've got is it the is it some of the flying archer? I think it's called brave archer. The brave archer. He that one looks quite retro as well. That one. Nice well, cover on the red and the brave archer. Personally, for me, for the brave archer, that's that's a very disappointing filler because that was full Sheng and Chan Chi, and they both done much better than that. Now, with the brave archer was apparently a successful film. It led to a number of sequels, I think. Um, but I've only ever seen the first one and I wasn't impressed. I mean, nothing wrong with the way it was made. It was just, it was, I think it had a very anticlimactic ending. It was more, more fan, too fantastical for me. Oh, yeah. um, but really what you'll find is just to go back to the show where there's air. It's a bit like, if you think of Golden Harvest, which names spring to mind you think of, well, you know, Wang Yu, Bruce Lee, Angela Mao Yun, uh, you know, Jackie Chan, Sam Hung Yun, you know, Jet Li in, mm -hmm. in, in the later years. Um, if you think of Shaw Brothers, you think of like David Chang, T. Lung, Fu Sheng, Chen Kuan Tai, you think of the, the, the Liu Brothers, the, the Venom's crew, you know, you, th you think of those kind of guys like Lo Lia, uh, Wang Lung, you think of all of them. It's like it's each each studio had certain names associated with it, you know, it's like D and B had like Donnie Yen and I think it was Michelle Yo, you know, um, in the 80s, 90s, that sort of thing. And the next Blu-ray, this is a, a subscriber here for me personally. And this oh. is a new copy of Ip Man, The Final Fight. Right. Directed by, yeah, I was right, it was Herman Yao, uh, who's, again, from, from a, those Category 3 uh, effects, Bun Man, Dr. Lam, and oh, yeah. Border Syndrome. Mm -hmm. um, this one stars, well, Bun, Ham, Bun Man himself, Anthony Wong, is the title of character, Ip Man. Um, I've never seen this one. I've seen the four, I've seen the, the Don Yen Ip Man movies. I've, seen, I've recently saw Ip Man, The Awakening, um, which... Yeah, yeah, I'll see no more. Um, I've not, I've seen clips of this one, I've never seen it all the way through. Um, I've heard it's meant to be a lesser outing, and 
I think that's the case and fair enough, but uh, this is the UK, the, uh, UK release by Cine Asia, as you can tell. Um, so give it a go, tell us what you think, hopefully you and the devs will enjoy it. Yeah, well, um, it's funny because there's that many of these ones now. You get a little bit confused as to what's where and where they're on there. Well, well you the, do. The you canon. Do. Well, if you, th if you think about it, if, like, just a, just a uh, change a stream from a, set, from a moment, look at Django. How many Django films have you got? Uh, Compa yeah. You know, you've only got like one real sort of Django film with Frank O'Neill. I know you've got Django Strikes Again in the, the, the 80s, but I had, I had that many different Django films af after the original. You just didn't know where they'd come out and go, and it was Django does this, Django does that. Yeah. And it's if it goes on for much longer, it's going to be that way with it. Man, it's going to be if, if man in space, if man and doing this and doing, you know, that, that sort of thing. If man 75. Well, that's it. You know, like uh, if man takes Manhattan or something like that. You know, um, <laughs> It, that's that's the way it's going to go, you know. Yeah, but uh, I do like these ones. I mean, the Donnie Yen ones are the the, the main ones. They're the pinnacle. Yeah. They are. They are. But uh, these ones, if you just like them, sort of embroidering the Donnie Yen like t tail, because mm -hmm. I know it's factual to a certain extent. Mm -hmm. These are kind of just like reimaginings of different parts of it, which is fair enough. Yeah. But yeah. I think you can always rest assured that the if you want to know about Ip Man, check out the Donnie Yen's first. Definitely. Definitely. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, they've got, I mean, they are the you are the you are the best made. They've got the best fights. They've got yeah. the best again in the end because he's he's a seasoned martial artist. You know, you're right. going to get and, and he learned actually Wing Chun for the film. It's not fake. It's all yeah legit. You know, right. So the next one is uh, the well uh, the first of our Umbrella Entertainment Blu-rays. Mm -hmm. Our Aussie friends will no doubt be aware of these. Um, and we we'll have the. Driving Delirium, I believe it's the it's a volume, the first volume in the series, 60s and 70s Savagery. Basically, a load of vintage trailers remastered in HD from the 60s and 70s, as you can tell by the title. I think this was the first release in the Driving Delirium series. There was six altogether. I think the second release was in um, an 80s compilation, a Maximum Overdrive, I think it was called, something like that. Um, so again, basically nothing but vintage trailers, as we all know, the old trailers are the best. Yeah, you know. Yeah, I mean. um, as I've said before, as far as I'm concerned, th this series, Driving Delirium, together with the um, Trailer Trauma series from the States, these represent the best trailer compilation you can get. I know there's other ones, like Kung Fu, Trailers of Fury, 42nd yeah. Street Forever, um, stuff like that. But for consistency and for just sh sheer volume of how many there is, you won't get better than the, this series, Driving Delirium, and the Trailer Trauma, Trauma, Trauma series in the US. Wow. You know, so have a look at that. Tell us what you think. These ones are always uh, a bit of a winner for me because uh, you you will get the fact of looking at them and think you've seen every film in the world, and then you see half of these, you think, I never even knew this existed. Then you go and try and find them out and seek them out. Sometimes they might be readily available, and sometimes uh, you can't see them for mm -hmm. the money. But... Uh, Barbarella, I know it's you know. Barbarella there, but yeah, that's. I mean, the, the artwork as well is always spectacular on them. So, what movie would you say that's from? Because that looks like something, but I don't know what. I'm not sure actually. Not Frankenstein and the Monster from Hell. Could be actually. It's got that look at him, hasn't it? Mm -hmm. Especially the uh, the face. I think that's coming out. Um, it's it's second sight. Yes. Yeah, and they're, do, they're doing uh, the mummy as well, aren't they? That's right. Yeah, that's mummy's right. long out of print, so that's that's a good one, isn't it? The uh, Studio Canal mummy's gone. That's you know, right. So you can't get it. But now that's it's um, 146 theatrical trailers. So it's amazing when you put the money to say, oh, I'll watch them, I'll watch a bit more, I'll watch a bit more. Before you watch, you know, it's like the drug, it's addictive. Yeah, you, yeah, you, 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 you can't help. I'll watch the next one. You're tuning I'll in for the next one, one. exactly, yeah. you know. No, that's excellent. I, like, I really like them ones. Like I say, you've got five other volumes. That's and two, two headed tran transplant, isn't it? I think it is. Yeah, I think with two heads. Yeah. Because I was one with Ray Millen, wasn't it? So I don't know. I was one with Ray Millen. Yeah. Where he's got that. Rosie Greer's head tattoos. Because um, he's a racist who basically, he's basically got Rosie Greer's head tattoos and Rosie Greer's um, a black guy. Right. And obviously you've got the two, you know, the, 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 the constantly at each other's throats. So, Mad Max. Um, yeah, I think there's Death Wish and Kioma. They're the violent breed of the Western with... Um, yeah. Frank Monero. Brilliant. And I think that's just a, is that Captain Kronos? That might hunt him on the back. One there. Yes, that's a hard one to get mind. Yeah. Yeah, I think you've got Capricorn one there, which um I got it on Blu-ray actually recently, Capricorn one, the network one. Um but if you like them, it's well worth tracking down 
the other the remaining five volumes or mm -hmm. if yeah. better yet if you get the get the, the the set which Umbrella released with all six discs in one, they basically combine all six yeah. discs in one Marvel oh, like set. Yeah. You know, okay. our Aussie okay. friends will confirm. Well, I'm quite sure will confirm this one. It's quite a box set, isn't it? Well, so it's basically an Amory case with six discs inside. So, yeah. and the next one is another Umbrella release, Day of the Dead. Now I know you've got this already, but this one is well, it's what they call the Ultimate Edition, Blu-ray and a DVD. You've got a DVD full of documentaries and a Blu-ray full of special features. I'm led to believe this has got the same transfer as the, shelf, uh, the Screen Factory release, which I think is meant to be a, an improvement over Arrows. Mm. Um, obviously, I haven't, I haven't checked this out. I can't, I can't say that for certain, just based, based on what I've read online. So I would suspect this has got the superior transfer to Arrows. And it's got, I wouldn't say it was a limited edition, but it's got a solid selection of extras here. Like I say, the, the DVD has got the many, the many Days of the Dead documentary. It's got the Joe of the Dead documentary with the late Joe. Palato, sure. uh, Reflections on the Living Dead, which I believe is a documentary about the Night of the Living Dead, as opposed to the Other Dead. It's also got tra uh, Travelogue of the Dead, which was also on our old Blu-ray, and an image gallery, whereas the Blu-ray has got a couple of commentaries and several featurettes, including, yeah. including a new documentary, World's End, The Legacy of the Other Dead. And, um, so really, this is definitely one of the better Blu-rays uh, of the Other Dead. You know, it ranks up there with the Arrow one, with the Anchor Bay, and the screen factory, all of which I've got. So, so have a look at this and tell us what you think. Well, funny enough, you know, you said I've got this movie. Mm -hmm. I haven't. What's going? I haven't got the block. We had the arrow one. I had one. I had it, but I haven't got it now. Really? What I, yeah. What I did was, you remember, I uh, saved enough for me drums. Mm -hmm. I'd save two thousand pounds in that pay for right. drums. So a few things had to be sort of gotten rid of. Mm -hmm. Now I thought I sold Dawn of the Dead and Day of the Dead. Right. Now what I thought of was, I thought. Hopefully, Dawn the Dead will come out in a better version, and it mm -hmm. did. Mm -hmm. I didn't know that Second Sight would do it. And then I thought as well, I thought, someone else has got to pick up Day of the Dead. Mm -hmm. So I know I can get like big money for it. So mm -hmm. I sold it for big money, and the mm -hmm. biggest I can get, I just put it on, and it went quite high, actually. Mm -hmm. And uh, that went towards the drums. Mm -hmm. I sh looking back at it, I wish I hadn't to do it, but I did. But I've always wanted to get Day of the Dead back. I always mm -hmm. think that this is going to come out 4K. It's got mm -hmm. to. It will sooner or later. Well, it's, it's only amount of time. The amount of times I've watched, since I got rid of that one, mm. the amount of times I wanted to watch this one and can't, mm. has been unreal. Mm. And I've always thought, well, I'm just going to have to bite the bullet, going to have to get like, an interim uh, blu DVD, <laughs> sorry, Blu ray to go along with it. Never haven't done it. And th then again, you don't really want to go and do it and then there'll be a 4K around the yeah. corner. So yeah. I didn't want to go back for the Arrow one. I could have bought another one of the Arrow one, but mm -hmm. I thought, no, because. Um, well, I'm spending a lot of money then. I need that money for the 4K. So, mm. in in short, this is amazing because uh, I want to watch this for a long time mm. and I can't I can't watch it, but I can now. No, you can't now. So that's, that's, that's the one that I thought, <laughs> what? Mm. And when he put it out, it was just like, you've read your mind with that one. But yeah, no, I haven't got it. Bear in mind, don't worry, I've got a spare copy. So that's, there's, there's <laughs> no, no, no worry. But you know what I'm like? I've, really, to be honest with you folks, it's simply a case of I've got, I've got too much stuff I've got to cut down for, for, for reasons of space, one way or another. Yeah. I am, it's a work in progress, basically, as time goes by. I'm already working on more stuff to put aside. I'm not okay. going to say what they are, but leave it with me. Uh, but basically, I'm just, I'm, I'm buying too much stuff. I've been doing it for too long. I've got to find a way to cut down. It's really as simple as that. You know, like I say, it's a work in progress. I will get there in the end. God knows when, probably when I'm ready to, to retire, but only, to, only we'll see how it goes. Um, but yeah, like I say, I suspect it looked better than the Arrow one. So if you want to check it out, just I will tell us what well, you The other one was, was all right, don't get us wrong, it wasn't too bad. But I always remember, I think when we watched it, when we first saw it, mm -hmm. I always thought it's good, but it felt like it could be a little bit better. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I think the Dawn of the Dead was a little bit better, mm -hmm. the, the one that had in the Blu-ray. Because um, when you had two, they had the rest was on DVD, didn't it? Mm -hmm. Actually, have you noticed uh, a, little, a little error there on the top? Read that bottom line there. The civilised the civilized world are now... The civilized world are now outnumber the living 40,000 to 1. Is that because they put the hand in there? No, 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 no. It's Well, let's have a look. Uh, well, yes, it is. Yes, but also the 40,000 should be 400,000. Because do you remember the line Dr. Frankenstein says? He says, uh, you don't have enough ammunition, Captain, to shoot them all in the head. The time to have done that would have been at the beginning. No, you've let them overrun us. And we are, we have been overrun, you know. We're now we're in a minority now, something like 400,000 won by my calculations. 
That's not 40,000, it's 400,000. Well, I should have remembered that, shouldn't I? Yeah. Sorry, I flipped that line, by the way. I flipped it. It was in my head, but it just didn't come out the right way. I'm sorry about that. Well, I don't even remember the line at all. Mm-hmm. So, uh, no, um, I, no, I wouldn't have known that. I just thought it didn't play it right. Yeah. You're right. No, it doesn't actually. I never know. That's, I'm a fault because I never noticed the hand. So, that, I'm, I'm a fault as well. So, yeah. you know. I do make mistakes. You know, I'm only human, just like the rest of you. You know. <laughs> but this, this is amazing. Um, and we'll, we'll, what we'll do is we'll have a quick look through these mm. and give you a bit of a thought at the end of the video mm-hmm. to what we actually thought of them. We'll probably we'll do what we did with the other video. We'll rank them in views of like, you know, what we think like from mm. from worst, which probably will end up being this one yeah. because the trailers are because all... Because they're that, that old. I mean, the grubby, and we don't mind yeah, that because yeah. grubby is all right for trailers. I mean, mm-hmm. In fact, the grubby are better for these. Um, so that's that's a given, but we'll see how they'll rank after that. Right. And just to see if, because uh, I'm kind of hard to remember what the, the arrow one was like at this. So let's see how that stacks up with that. Brilliant. I'm amazed at that one, man. That's that's unreal. And the last of the umbrella releases is the great long weekend. This was from 1975, I think, directed by Lee Colin Eccleston. And this is like an eco horror uh, about the uh, basically bickering couple who go to the countryside to try and patch up their marriage. And they don't show Mother Nature any respect, and Mother Nature decides to fight back. Now, I had this on DVD, I had the Synapse DVD for some time, and I'd heard it was a good film, but I kept up put, putting off uh, watching and watching it again and again, because I'd heard it was a bit of an artsy eco horror. Um, that was what put me off, you know. Anyway, um, some, some time back, uh, I finally plucked up the courage to watch the DVD, and what a film. Really? What a Philip night, I'm telling you, John. I thought to myself, I'm hoping I'm not going to waste like an, an hour and a half of my life. I'm not, I'm not going to get back. Um, but I've got to be honest, the transfer on the DVD was beautiful. It, it's a, it's um, yes, it, it, it is a bit, it, it is a bit arty, but it's arty in a good way. It doesn't, it doesn't hmm. drive you away from from the film that draws you in. And uh, there's lo- lots of little subversive moments where your know, mother nature is biting back, not in, in your face kind of way, but quite. Oh. Quite, um, you know, very slyly. Uh, but this, I thoroughly enjoyed this. Um, the reason I'm getting rid of it is because a lot long was uh, re-released by Umbrella with more extras in a CD soundtrack and a slipcase. So basically, this is redundant now. Mm. So once again, it's well worth a watch. John, you love it. Okay, I'm quite sure all your friends would agree with me. I'm trying to think if I've even heard of this one. I don't think I have, you know. Um, it doesn't ring any bell. I mean, the song, the title, mm-hmm. um, "The Long Weekend," obviously mm-hmm. does. But um, um, I think it was, re- it was it's released. One of those titles, isn't it? That you think? Yeah, it was released on DVD over here by Optimum, but I don't think I have many extras. And I think, I think it's been remade in recent years. I could be wrong, but I think it was remade. Um, no, I'm just. But uh, it's 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 great. It's a very very enjoyable film. Um, don't be put up by the. By the arts aspect of it, it's, I thoroughly enjoyed it. Yeah, yeah, that's uh, that's an interesting watch. That I never heard of it, mm-hmm. but um, sounds sounds good. Well, second sight film released over here, um, but I don't think it's got all the same extras. And plus, the fact is, I didn't know if you'd want that one because I've got that one as well. I'm getting rid of that one, but I thought with that one have a reversible sleeve. Yeah, you go for that one instead. Well, actually, um, that's Excuse where I've seen it because you know we've. Uh, I said I've seen something about this mm-hmm. one. Yes, I've seen the uh, second sight one, yeah. definitely, but uh, didn't know anything about it. Well, it, it was a toss-up between giving you that one or that one. I thought, well, that's got the reversible sleeve and you like the umbrella stuff, so... Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. definitely. And the last one is quite a new release, a Rattler, which is why I'm getting rid of it, and it's the 1976-77 George Ripoff Tentacles, <clears throat> directed by the um, Video G. Asinitas, also known as Oliver Hellman, I think it was. Um, that was, I've never seen this one actually. I've seen the odd little bit here and there. I think the first the first bit I've seen this film was way back years ago when Sky used to have access to German TV channels on Sky TV. And I think I saw the opening, if it's the right film. Um, but I've never seen it all the way through it, to be perfectly honest with you. This is the, the new Kino Lobo release. It came as a rattler, so the disc's loose. Um, but as you can tell, the slipcase with some lovely artwork. I love that artwork. Mm. And the thing is with tentacles, uh, it's one of those films which has always had great, from my memory, it's always had great theatrical artwork. I mean, the, the original American Post, it's, it's, oh, it's fantastic. Um, great cast as well. John Houston, Shelley Winters, Bo Hopkins, Henry Fonda. You know, so it's not like you've got actors who aren't well known, you know. 
Um, but again, it's, it came as a rattler. I've since got a replacement, which came fine. So if you want it, it's a new release, it's all yours. Yeah. It's, I mean, look at that cover. Brilliant artwork on that cover. I'll tell you what, I, I hope this comes out on camera. This is so detailed. It is. That's, 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 that's what I love about it. I mean, look at that. I mean, because when you see it from there, you think, oh, that, that's quite nice. But when you see how how intricate the artwork is. It's the guy's head at the bottom. I love it. It it's, it's, uh -huh. it's looks so, like you see, a detail. No. To be honest, I've never heard of this movie, you know, John. Well, it was, if I'm right, it was the first George off of, of the of, uh, off the bat. Um, I think I see. I think it was 76, 77, and um, of course I had like a piranha mm. and um, orca and uh, barracuda, you know, uh, further down the line. Kino Lover though, they do some. Uh, I think they get a bit forgotten about, but they're, they're a great company, aren't they? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So what I did was I tried to keep, I tried to keep the disc, the, the box. I need low so the disc wouldn't scratch against the hub on the inside. Um, but like I say, it's I've, I've never seen the film, so I can't comment on it. Um, I'm going to watch it sooner or later. God knows when. You know me. Um, but see what you think. It should play fine though. I was right, 1977. There we go. Yeah. So that's Region A disc. Region A. Yeah. I'll put it on the, uh, the other player. Mm -hmm. Although I will try it on there because sometimes I say this, you know, Region A. And it's on there, it plays on Region the, Zero. Yeah. Region Zero. So I always try them first to see if that's the way. But um, wow. So, yes, John? Mm -hmm. No, I was going to say, I'm assuming the, 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 the cover on the actual case itself is probably the American artwork where it's got the woman being attacked by the by the octopus. Right. Again, I love it. And I'm, I'm hoping to meet have a reversible sleeve like the Invasion of Body Snatchers. I could yeah. be wrong, of course. It's well, we'll soon see, won't we? But uh, so what we're going to do is now we're going to go, th go through these, flick through them all, and uh, we'll, we'll come back mm -hmm. and we'll talk about them like in reverse order. So mm -hmm. what we thought was one mm -hmm. that would like, be the... That we're going to go off picture quality, yeah. see what we're, it's done by. But uh, so, see you soon. Okay, yeah, see you shortly. Thanks for watching. So, okay, we're back. And we've had a look at all of these movies, and uh, what we're going to do is we're going to go through them uh, from the lowest quality to the best quality, and we're just going to talk a little bit about what we thought about the picture quality. So, first up, which would be the lowest quality, is 22 Bullets. Yeah, now I should expect this as a DVD, therefore it's going to be obscured when you put it in the Blu ray or 4K up here. Yeah. Um, as you can expect, I mean, the, yeah, the quality was better, um, not pristine because we're dealing with a DVD. I mean, don't get me wrong, you, still, you know, I still love DVDs, still look great, but uh, upscaled, yeah, definitely better, but out of all of them, uh, the least. Of yeah, the pack so far. We knew that would be happening, but I tell you what, it's not a bad looking uh, DVD. It's, I mean, not, it's quite good. Yeah, it's, it's not too bad at all. I also um, noted um, the Italian actor Valentino Valentini from the likes of City of the Eleven Dead. And um, what was the other one? Cannibal Ferox as well, amongst others. If, yeah. Yeah, if you're in your Italian in horror, you should know the guy I'm talking about. Yeah, but when, he, when he pointed him out, I thought, yeah, I don't know what you mean now. I would have known from the name, but the, the face, yes. Yeah, but like I say, the, the lowest of the pack, but um, still pretty good. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So next up is Driving Delirium. Right, now this was always going to be a hit and miss affair because you've got your countless trailers from the 60s and 70s. Some look better than others. I mean, you can tell it being remastered, but... You know, still, I mean, none of them are what you call pristine from what we checked out. So, you know, so it's got to be ups and downs. Um, but it's better than I thought. Yeah, I mean, and yeah. Some of the, some of the, you could tell they've done a bit of work on some of these trailers. Mm -hmm. um, and what, what was good in it, what we both uh, really enjoyed, was the fact that they had these sort of weird commercials on. Yeah, like, um, like I'm assuming, like, like in, intermission commercials from, like, foreign... Um, theatrical presentations. Yeah, a German one, on, a German one, one yeah. German cola. Um, Af Afri cola, which yeah. uh, none of us, neither of us, have ever heard of that before. Weird sort of like horror music playing behind the, the stuff, which it, made you think that they're trying to promote somebody drinking this lovely Coca Cola drink, yeah. and uh, they had this sort of sinister synth music playing, didn't they? Which was a bit. Odd. It was a bit, yeah. It was a bit not necessarily unsettling, but yeah, off, 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 offbeat funny, you know. Um, like I say. We're dealing with all the material, so we're yeah. not dealing with something top level yet, so you expect fluctuations. Yeah. But, uh, I mean, look at, we flip the art, um, and that shows you how much stuff you get on here. And I think the second disc which we tried out, the 70 stuff, was uh, 4 hours 40, 14 minutes long. Yeah. And that's only one of the dis discs. There's a two discs in there, so I thought there was only the one. Is there one? Um, yep. Yeah. Two discs. So part one is the 60s, and uh, 
part two of the 70s. Yeah, okay. So really, um, the 70s disc was just all four hours long, so God knows how long the 60s disc is, is, is going to be. But, but the, when you look at the 60s disc, it doesn't look like as long as there. You know, for the trailers, so it might be I would imagine the two. Yeah, I would imagine. I'll, I'll take away, I guess I'll see two hours, maybe thereabouts. You know, I could be wrong, of course. Um, next up was... Long weekend. Yeah, generally quite a short presentation. There were some shots where I thought there was a lot of heavy green or perhaps digital noise, you know. Yeah. Um, it was it, the beach scenes, weren't it, on the beach? The sky. The yeah, sky was, was very noisy. Yeah, it I mean, the usual sort of, um, you know, you can put it with green. Yeah. Like oh. pleasing on the eye green. This was mm -hmm. quite distracting, wasn't it? Yeah. Just on certain scenes. I would say, if, but not, not a natural green, not what you expect to see, quite a bit overdone. Um, yeah. I'm no expert on digital noise. John will surely know more than I do, more, know, know more than I do about that. Um, yeah, quite sharp on the on the um, the scenes more away from the outdoors, like in you know, in, in the forest, that sort of thing. Yeah. Um, sharp, colourful, nice, but outside um, a bit yeah, a bit of a drop. It's not all a all a movie, is it? So no, there's a bit of dirt on the it's a bit of flex on it as well, but. In general, it was pretty nice, wasn't it? Yeah, oh, definitely. And like I say, it's a great film, so it's, it's well worth a watch if you haven't already I'm seen sure, it. I'm sure, when I've looked at it, I'm sure I've seen this way back when. Um, it does ring a few bells. Yeah, so next up, we've got Tentacles. Yeah, now, as I mentioned before, I've, I love the artwork for this film. Reversible sleeve with great artwork either side. Um, great slipcase. The quality, uh, I was expecting a bit more. Um, there was quite a few scratches, speckles, marks, you know, and I mean, you expect you expect that sort of thing when you're watching the opening credits for an older film. You, 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 tend, you tend to get that. Um, once the credits finished, I was expecting that to that to um, to disappear. It didn't didn't really quite live up to my expectations. Some of the shots, uh, some of it was quite nice, quite colourful, quite sharp. But I have to be honest, I was expecting a little bit more with this one. Yeah. I thought that if it didn't have the flex on, the white flex, this yeah. one would have been really superior. Yeah. But some of the uh, sharpness and the colours was absolutely brilliant, but you had to sort of, we kind of marked it down a little bit for the yeah. fact that it just had them flex on, yeah. which was a bit bit of a strange one if they'd done so much work on it. Mm -hmm. Why didn't they go fully restore it? I think you and I were hoping for once the credits, the opening yeah. credits had finished, then you are wow, things would have really kicked in yeah. and there would have been little or no scratches or speckles of any kind. Then it would have really um, been easy on the eyes, but yeah. not not quite what we were expecting. Yeah, a bit of a shame, but in general, I mean, the, the cover, the covers, mm -hmm. and the movie itself looked pretty um, pretty good. Yeah, It's just we're being, not critical, but we're just trying to give an honest opinion to what we see to, this, um, to these movies. So next up is Day of the Dead. Will you see this cover? And that's the reverse cover. Yeah. yeah. I've never seen that before, if I'm honest, John. To be perfectly honest, it looks to me, maybe I'm wrong, it looks to me like that artwork was done by Charlie Adlard, who I believe draws, uh, draws the, the Walking Dead graphic novels. I could be wrong. It actually looks a bit graphic novel-y, doesn't yeah. it? Yeah. Um, wow. It looks like Charlie Adlard's work off that. I mean, it, not, not, I haven't seen that for years. Um, but to be honest with you, the transfer to, me, to other eyes look better than the superior to arrows. It looks, yes. the, the, the skin tones look warmer. Mm -hmm, definitely. A bit more, bit more colour, a bit more colour in them. Yeah. Um, so, I would agree with the online reviews that this this appears to be the same transfer taken from the Scream Factory Blu-ray, which it, again come along later after after the Arrow release. Um, some solid extras. We checked out the DVD disc as well. Yeah. Just documentaries and the quality. Well, as you could expect with DVD with with vintage documentaries, um, not flawless, but you know watchable. But I'm so happy to have this back in the collection because it's been missing for quite a few years, ever since I got me drums, which must have been about 2016, I think, mm -hmm. or 2017. So it's been a while since, and that shows you because I was thinking, oh, there's going to be a better one out. Mm -hmm. They supersede the Arrow one, mm -hmm. also 4K, mm -hmm. and just nothing's happened in the UK with Day of the Dead, has it? Well, that's, that'll keep you going till the 4K comes because for, yeah. for me, personally, that's better than the Arrow one. Yeah. Uh, it compares favourably with the, I think it was the old Anchor Bay and the Screen Factory one, because that has got the, is it the George Romero Mifid interview, which I think is, is yeah. quite lengthy, which isn't on the American release. So this one, it's quite quite worthy release. Yeah. Um, I'll be definitely watching this soon, because when you want to watch it and you haven't got it, you want to watch it even more, don't you? Well, I had no idea. I, I knew you had it, but I didn't realise you had it. You didn't, yeah. didn't have it any longer. So when uh -huh. you mentioned to me in the earlier video, you didn't, you didn't have it anymore. I was quite... 
what? I was quite surprised. I know when you pulled out, I was like, oh, this is it. Day of the Dead, finally. Wow. So next up, we've got uh, some of the ones we checked out of the 88 Asian collection. And so we had some varying things on them. But uh, yeah. we'll go through what we thought of those, and I'll, I'll show you the sort of reverse art on them. So we've got, first up, we've got the one arm Swordsman. Yeah. And like I said, this one looked great on, on the Region 1 DVD I, I, I gave you in the previous video. Mm -hmm. um, the Blu-ray looks a bit of an upgrade, a bit better, not much better. Um, but then again, for a film made in 1967, I think it looks great. Yeah. The print is absolutely perfect as well, which sometimes you think for 1967, would you see a little bit of dirt on it? Would you? And you'd be sort of having to take it on the chin to say, well, it's not pristine, but that's where it is. The colours were amazing on it as well, wasn't it? It was, yeah. And uh, like I say, I mean, um, the DVD looked great. And this looked, I wouldn't say it looked much better, but it does look, it is an upgrade. And uh, like I say, for such an old film, you wouldn't expect it to look as clean as what it does. But hey, it does, and it go it's a testament to the Shaw Brothers must have kept their films really well, well yeah, preserved over the yeah. years um, to look this good. Because as I've said previously, I've, 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 I haven't really seen a bad Shaw Brothers transfer. Yes, I've seen lesser ones, mm. but they've all been great in one way or another, you know. Yeah, and don't forget, maybe when they, were, when, when they shot this in '67, they might have upgraded the, you know, they get like '78, '79. Yeah. I may have upgraded that sort of stuff to uh, shoot it with mm -hmm, mm -hmm. the cameras and that. So next up is uh, Existence. Now, personally for me, this is where the releases begin to pick up in quality. Mm -hmm. um, for me, this is the best Blu-ray you can get at the moment. If there's a better one out there, then please feel free to correct me. Um, lovely transfer mm -hmm. on this. Uh, sharp, bright, clean, colourful, the whole nine yards. Um, we, very, we, clear, very clean it, it is it is yeah. we, we neither of us could 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 find fault with it I mean not that we're technical experts I mean we're not but yeah. we like what we see mm -hmm. you know and that that's that's good enough for us um, you know it's got the, the slip case the booklet it's got some uh, some solid extras you know and until a better version comes along which could be some time considering the kind of film it is mm -hmm. um, you know this will certainly do so it's it's uh, if you're a Cronenberg fan go for it but it's not widely known, is it? It's not one of the ones that everyone like, rushes to and the same thing of David Cronenberg. No, no, but I mean, like I see, I mean, it's it's um, it's good. It's interesting, you know. It's um, it, just just give it a shot. You know, it's good. Go for them. Well, that's all you can ask for, really, isn't it? Mm -hmm. If the movie's good or not. So next up is lovely Clan of the White Lotus. Yeah, <laughs> I'm um, to th I can't see down there. But, yeah. <laughs> it's it's that one, yeah. Yeah, it's um, it, again a solid Shores transfer. Uh, bright, colourful, sharp, uh, a transfer, not a mark on it. The only thing was with this, we did notice there were a few instances where faces appeared to be a little bit soft, yeah. uh, a little bit a little bit out of focus maybe. Yeah. Um, just on some of the shots we tried out, but bar that, um, the detail was, was, was spot on, was yeah, lovely. Was. Um, colours, colours were, I mean, colours are all good in this, in these yeah. ones, aren't they? But, oh yeah, definitely. Um, yeah, we just thought that, when we looked at it, we could just see the faces just lacking something. Mm -hmm. and you could see a little bit of a blurriness to some of them. Yeah, yeah again, again, maybe that might, hopefully might, that might just happen a handful of occasions yeah. during the presentation. Right. Hopefully it won't be there right from start to finish. Um, but generally, a solid transfer. Yeah, I agree with that. So next up is the flying guillotine. This looked lovely. Yeah, this looked, it, you know, the, 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 because all of the, the costumes the characters wear, the Goals, the reds, the little red um, tassels on top of the yeah. on top of the bad guys' hats. Your beautiful, vibrant colours. You know, um, again, as is usual with these Shaw Brothers films, there's not a mark on on on, on the on the the transfer. It's lovely, you know, the lovely print, um, bright, excellent. You know, the the only the only drawback I would say with these Shaw Brothers these um, celestial transfers is that it's been mentioned before umpteen times online. Um, is it you have, you have the I don't know if this is the right word the fish eye lens effect where the, the frame appears to be like rounded and it results in some of the characters like a fish ball yeah, yeah yeah and if there's characters standing on the side of the frame they're going to appear to be very thin like, mm -hmm. like pencils you know yeah. but I did read online that was some sort of side effect of the show scope shooting process I don't know if that's true I can only go by what, what I read online, mm -hmm. but it, it's noticeable. But what I will say is, I don't believe it's a, it's anything wrong, anything at fault with the disc. It's just 
the process itself, the shooting process. So nothing wrong with the disc, the transfer is lovely. I think it was, uh, I was talking about the fact in, in the Hammer film, the uh, Rasputin, the Mad Monk, they've got the same thing on there, especially when you see the full widescreen, because they've got like a widescreen 235, oh. and uh, maybe they were using the same scope that they had on here, the same lens. Mm -hmm. Now, for me, I'll, I'll get this impression that the lens is like curved like that. Yeah. So mm -hmm. when it's panning across like that, it's, it tends to, you can see it more, can't you? It's like that. You can't, yeah. it's, it's more, it's, uh, yeah, it's like you, you, you're not panning it across, you're sort of panning it around like that. Yeah, you know that's what it? it. Like, yeah, you're right. And also, I think even on the, uh, the Hammer movie, it did have a little like sort of disclaimer to say, there's nothing the matter with this picture. It's just that they used these lens, which were like these kind of like, curved lenses mm -hmm. uh, maybe to get the two three five at them days and I, I remember reading thing about that and you could definitely see it on that but it mm -hmm. said you could see it on a, a different scope on it so it didn't have to see that yeah. uh, effect but uh, it's not really anything but it's I know you've um, we're talking about it it is a thing that they do mention yeah you have to you have to be aware like I say this is not a defect with the disc there's not actually there's nothing wrong with the disc it's just the fact that this appears to be a side effect of the shooting process. Yeah. You know, if there's, if there's another, another reason, I'm quite sure somebody out there will uh, let us yeah, well, that. Yeah, well, I'd if anybody knows anything more about that. I'm sure there's some technical people that could maybe say the proper definitive answer to that. But it's um, it's a thing that's, that these movies do have in them, but it's not off-putting. No, it's no, not as if no. you say to yourself, I can't watch this. Not like that at all. <laughs> <laughs> that was the Debs. So top of the list on the 88 Films Asian Collection is The Dragon Missile. Now this looked beautiful. Wow. I must admit, I wasn't, I was, I wasn't expecting it. To, I think neither of us were expecting it to look no. this good, but it looks the, the best of all the show other ones we've checked. I mean, um, the flying guillotine come close. Yeah. It was, a, it was a close year between the two, but if I was forced to choose, it's that one, because we, we, we couldn't find fault. No. Um, I think there were maybe some instances of the fisheye effect, yeah. but like like we've explained before, that's nothing. That's nothing um, on the disc. But the transfer itself, couldn't fault it. Wow. Lovely colours, pin yeah. shot. You know the credits when the credits come on with the red and then yeah. the credits yeah. the yellow. Exactly. It just looked absolutely. Wasn't it? It was like, like took you. Know, wow. Can you know, yeah, exactly. You, you could you could you could put that disc on. Forget about the plot. Forget about the storyline. Just look at it. Yeah. And marvel at what you're looking at. You know, you can watch the fights, which look which look fine from what we what we checked out. Um, but you could just sit and just just enjoy what you what you're looking at without really paying attention and, to what was going on. When they're in uh, like the sets that they're in, and mm -hmm. also when they're in sort of their versions of uh, like a like a wood yeah. land and area, huh? the, the uh, grass. That's they it. Had to obviously, plant themselves. Mm -hmm. It was just unreal. That's that's what I mean about the show about the sets. I mean, yes, you can tell at times the sets. But that doesn't detract from the fact that look, you can tell the details as you know the efforts went into them, yeah. and they don't look great. You know that the, the, you know they don't wobble, or they don't threaten to fall over, or anything like that. Mm -hmm. They just look really solid, yeah, well put together sets. No, I totally agree. They look that, lovely. That's it'd be interesting actually to, for me to go something else and have a look at the ones I've got actually and just revisit them. <laughs> and see what I think is good compared to this. This may be the best one I've got. Okay. Well, as I said before, try a Jaguar and Pole Fighter, because that's the one I give you a while back, and that's yeah. still sealed upstairs, so get that shot well, and let me know what you think. It is opened, because I've you know, done me opening where I've took the shrink. Oh, oh right. right. I mean, right. it looks okay. sealed, but it's, yeah. it's definitely opened. Right. And I'm going to have to go back to it, because, I mean, I've, I've had a good time with all of these movies, mm. but I'm going to have to go back and see if there's ones that are like this good. This is the standard for me at the moment. I haven't got them all. Mm -hmm. I've got a fair few. Um, but if anybody's looking for a really good uh, picture quality on this at this point, Dragon Missile is the Dragon Missile. I've, I've, I've got to go with that. I mean, yeah. if I know Arrow are dipping their toes up in the Shaw Brothers uh, pool, as, as we know. If they do decide to do an American release of like this or Flying Guillotine, it would it'd be interesting to see if they could improve upon the transfer. I'd be surprised if they could. Because I can't imagine these two getting any better um, yeah. bar, bar a UHD release. You know, yeah. but for, for Blu rays, um, beautiful. Really In fact, nice I think we're talking about this one. You could actually look at it, and if I said to you, look, I've got a 4K of this movie, mm -hmm. you could probably get away that this was one of them borderline, I call them yeah. borderline 4Ks, where you could yeah. say, yeah. Mm -hmm. And it wouldn't, if I put it on, you wouldn't go, no, there's no way that's a 4K. No, you would think, well, I could maybe you, swindle you in that one. You could, yeah. Um, but like I say, for me, you know, all these show brothers ones look good and one way or another, but yeah. this, 
Yeah. It, it's, the, it's the best one so far. So what do we think was the best one in all of these movies? It is Ip Man, The Final Fight. Yeah, now I'll be honest, I wasn't expecting this to look as good um, mm. as what it does. Now I knew, I know it's an older film from, from, from a few years back, yeah. um, but I know it's also meant to be one of the lesser Ip Man efforts, so I thought maybe it wouldn't look as good. Um, how wrong uh, I was, how wrong we both were, I was quite... Um, I was quite taken aback how good it looked, you know. Um, Another borderline 4K for me. Yeah, yeah. It as, as, as you said at the time, yeah, again, couldn't fault the picture. No marks, no flaws, defects of any kind. The colours lovely, the uh, brightness lovely, details lovely. Um, again, it's again, I'm sharp, isn't it? It's yeah, sharp. lovely. I mean, pin shot. I mean, I'm no purist. You know, I, I don't know the ins and outs of this, and I'm quite sure there's other viewers here who know not more than me about the subject, but I. I, do, I, know, I know what I like, <laughs> I like what I was, uh, what I've seen on that chance for it. Um, like I say, I was pleasantly surprised how good it looked, yeah, you know, so um, yeah, excellent, the best of the lot. Well, thanks again, John, mm -hmm. for uh, coming over and, and giving me the chance to... <laughs> no bother. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry I didn't mean to take you off there. I was going to say, I'll have to get my son involved, I'll have to get Lurch in the go. But uh, no, thanks once again. Really appreciate this, and uh, I'm just so blown away by them. And to help get Do Day of the Dead, the thing <laughs> that's been on my mind forever to see, I've got to get Day of the Dead sometime. And I'm holding off thinking, and I do want to watch it. I've been wanting to watch it for quite a while, ever since I got me Day me Dawn of the Dead, actually. Mm -hmm. You know, I, like I say, I had no idea you didn't have Day of the Dead anymore. Mm -hmm. um, so that I was quite, you know, now I know that I'm quite happy to supply you with another copy to keep you going until the inevitable four uh, UHC hits the shelves, which will happen sooner or later. Yeah. You know, but like I said before, uh, it's, it's a work in progress trying to cut down how much I've got. And I'm already working on other ones to bring over, <laughs> which I can't go into detail now. It's in wow. baby st early stages at the moment, but the ball is rolling. Yeah. So, wow. what's this space? No, well, you'll be coming back, that's for sure. We've got a few things lined up in the uh, in the future. Mm -hmm. We're talking about down the line, getting the live stream going. Um, that's going to be something that we're going to work towards. And then also mm -hmm. got a few little um, video ideas that we're going to talk about. Mm -hmm. I don't want to give them out yet because you might be asking me to say, when are you going to do this one when we don't know when we're going to yeah. get together again? What I would say is hopefully if we get together before before the end of, the end of August, then I may well oh, yeah, be definitely. doing a live stream by then. I'm yeah. certainly up for the idea, you know, if I can keep your uh, confidence up. Um, also, it may well be worth having the, another discussion about social anxiety because I did enjoy that post and there's a lot more comments I want to like about that post, which I haven't had a chance to do so yet yeah. because you won't be surprised to, to hear I suffer from the same thing. So I know how John feels, I know how a lot of you feel because I've been thought myself and I didn't know about the condition until John put it in my attention, which I will, I'm quite happy to talk about in greater detail at a later date doesn't bother me at all but uh, well actually as I said on my social anxiety video when I watched that TV program about Rob Gilbert when he was talking about his you know like he sort of broke it that he had social anxiety and I thought hang on a minute this is me so when I was sort of getting that just watching it I just was saying to John it's like the revelation light bulb hit us I said you know what John this is this thing's happened and I went through the whole thing with him and then that's when you said hang on a minute I think this is something that I could relate to and then we, we got talking didn't we mm. we talked for quite a few weeks about our like sort of um what's happened to us and what our theories are mm. and, and the way we do what i would think. yeah what i would say is i mean I'm, i haven't got the time to go into detail now about how i came into it and um, once once john mentioned it to me like i see i'm quite happy to discuss it at a later date hopefully again before the end of august that's not a problem yeah. i'm quite happy to get come back here and talk about it just if you want to do a, a solo video about it that's fine i'll, I'll open up um, uh, so much longer like a live stream. Yeah, and I mean, I'm quite uh, well. Well, I wouldn't see so much a live stream with a video, but I'm quite happy oh, to do li live stream about films um, if well, we can. You know, yeah, I mean, it would be a thing that you could have like a sort of discussion about it. Yeah, because it's yeah, all it's fine. all right me saying this is what happened to me, and uh, it, there's a lot of great comments when people are talking about their experiences, and it's, I'm finding a lot of things out about. A lot of people who I wouldn't have thought would have social anxiety do have social anxiety, which mm. is always a bit what when you hear it, and then you just think, well, it's not it's not debilitating. No. It's just something you've got to kind of know you've got. I think once you know you've got it, then you can kind of think of a way to move on with it. Well, yeah, I mean, it, it does it does explain a lot of things about 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 me going back to, to a long time to when I was a kid, yeah. and I also believe there's people at work who suffer from the same thing. So it's not a 
I certainly don't feel um, embarrassed to, to, to discuss anything because I know there's other people. Yeah. You know yourself and you know plenty of other people yeah. on the, who watch this channel or people who I work with who feel the same way. So you're not alone. You know, there's always somebody who we can talk to about that. Yeah. You know. So hopefully before the end of August, so we can try and get together again. We can talk oh, yeah. about that and we'll, we'll, we'll get the detail. Definitely will. I you mean, know. we've got a lot of video ideas to. To, to work upon, haven't we? Mm -hmm. I'm quite happy to do a live stream if I'm trying to get together before August. Yeah. You know, uh, give it a go, see how uh, see how it works out, and uh, hopefully it'll work out for the better. I'm nervous it won't get the better of me. But it's sorry, actually, it's, it's I was very nervous, and I was so nervous doing me me, me proper one with uh, Keith, mm. uh, the first one I did that with. But after doing it a little bit, you get into it. It's not that bad, and mm. also mm. Um, on the one we're going to do, we're going to do it together live it's going to be on the youtube one it's not on the stream yard one mm -hmm. so it's a lot easier to navigate that one i find Fine. for the pair with i'll be in charge of the comments mm -hmm. and we'll just uh it'll be, it'll be through the day anyway so just a heads up it's not going to be an evening one and it's going to be maybe for about an hour and a half it's going to last that long <laughs> it honestly the hour and a half will blink it'll be gone so you'll be thinking hang this i've been talking to you for five hours what happened it's just what happens when you're on the live stream. Uh, they just get away from you. Mm -hmm. But uh, you'll be all right, man, John. It's, mm -hmm. it's one of those things where you think, I can't do it. But when you do it, you think, is that it? It's that easy. Well, let, let's, let's uh, let the viewers decide. You know, let's uh, see what they've got to say about it. But, um, I'm no, sure it's... they would like to. And there'd be plenty of things they would like to ask you, like mm -hmm. first hand. Because um, you always get uh, good comments on your videos. And especially if you knowledge on what they were talking about. Well, you know, my, my opinion is, effectively, I'm just a farm boy. I'm not an expert. I don't cons I'll don't. i never consider myself, myself an expert. I'm just a farm boy. I know what I like. If I know enough to answer a question, fair enough, I'll give it a shot. If I don't, then fair enough, somebody else will know the answer. Yeah. You know, if I, if, uh, so be it. You know, um, I'm well, nothing, I'm nothing, if not bothers, you know that. Yeah. Well, one thing, if I sure, if you don't say a comment that John doesn't know, I won't know it. Mm -hmm. So there's that. So you know, if, if you say, oh, what was this? And I say, John said, I don't know. I say, well, I'm out. Because yeah. if you don't know it, I won't know it. Yeah. So there's plenty of things to be coming up in the future from the two Johnnies. So it's good night from me. Ah, uh, it's a good night from him. Good night. What I've tried to do now, you know, with my channel, when you put that, that end song in it, mm -hmm. I've tried to get it as soon as I say good night and put your thumb up. <laughs> 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 do you know what you know what it says on that that video? Yeah. Cheeky knife. That's it's a cheeky knife. It's a cheeky knife. Mm -hmm. Cheeky, cheeky knife. <laughs> so, yeah.